When we read the original legend, it is about a girl who saves her father's life to do the right thing. Well, when we read it, we absorbed it, and then we made the really bad mistake of ignoring that. We started off making a movie about a girl who was unhappy. We explored for a while a character who was tired of her life, who wanted to escape a lot, that she was betrothed, that basically her destiny was inscribed in big stone tablets in an ancestral temple, and she was not culturally allowed to break those rules. It didn't really hold up strong because we ended up with this very self-serving character. And we looked at it and went, wow, this is a character we don't like. And so what we realized is that we had forgotten the original intent of the legend. We decided that the original poem actually had all the elements that we needed. It had a very selfless girl. That's why you really fall for her, because you fall for the fact that she cares more for others than she does for herself. We tried to make a character that wasn't embodying all evil or all good, that somebody had a lot of faults and was just like you or I, that she's writing cheat notes on her arm, that she gets up in the morning and she's a mess, just like everybody else, and that, and that she has her moments where she doubts herself or that she looks at herself in the mirror and doesn't like what she sees. And it's that kind of humanity that makes her such a great character. One of the really wonderful things about this story is the love and the relationship that Mulan and her father have. My, my. He recognizes Mulan's unique qualities and he understands her. But look, this one's late. But I'll bet that when it blooms, it will be the most beautiful of all. When she finds out that he's being called off to war, we discover really how much she cares for him. Her mother would do anything to stop her father from going to war. She basically knows she's saying goodbye to him forever and yet being powerless about it. Mulan, knowing her place as a young woman in that culture, is supposed to be powerless to stop it as well. We had to create a character who was not only just going to fret about it, but actually do something about it. one of the very first scenes to be animated was a close-up scene of Mulan watching her father and mother argue inside of the house and the shots have been constructed very deliberately to frame Mulan in. Everything sort of blocks in around her that she's kind of trapped even within her own soaking hair that her face is boxed in and that she doesn't seem to have options. The window closing down around the silhouette of her father and her mother. The believability that Mark Han handled the scene with, where she's watching, then looks away, and then looks back up again because she cannot tear herself away. That she's not willing to accept that she's powerless is the first time that she really came alive. And with a whirl of hair wiping that shot, she decides to break that box. All of the scenes begin to take on emotion and a life. She doesn't sit around and think, man, I'm not supposed to do this, I'm a woman. She thinks, I have to do this, I'm going to save my father's life. The choices that she makes are based on what's the right thing for the situation. It's never about what about me, it's I am going to take this cannon and I'm going to get my commanding officer really mad at me. Ping, come back! But I'm going to take the cannon anyway because I am going to start an avalanche that's going to get rid of the bad guys. You just see her make those choices for the benefit of the good every time. And one of the reasons she's successful and that we really worked on is that she has to use both her brain and her physical ability in order to solve most of her problems. Being much smaller than most of her fellow soldiers, uh, probably physically not as strong as many of the men, she could use her wits or her hey guys, mind. I've got an idea. To defeat the enemy over just using sheer will or, or brawn or, or kung fu even. She, I mean, she did have that by the end as a weapon, but it wasn't just a physical defeat. It was she outsmarted her enemy, and that's how she, that's how she defeated them. Well, there's a split second where the Shan Yu sees her and he misjudges her. 
It looks like you're out of ideas. He, in a sense, looks at her like society looks at her. Not quite. And that was his big mistake. Mulan is using a fan that is the most uh, feminine object you can get against, you know, a steel sword. And uh, she wins by, you know, the intelligence and uh, being flexible. What you notice is that she has changed the way society thinks about the role of women. And this is made very clear in that final sequence where the emperor bows. Oh. <laughs> And then she turns around, and you see this entire sea of people bowing to her. She succeeded at doing what she did because of who she was inside, not who she was physically or, the, or whether she was a man or a woman. The thematic of the movie that we kept in our heads all the time is to thine own self be true. And we are, every single one of us, a different person. We are born and we acquire different looks, different body types, different skill sets, personalities. And you have to find out who you are and be true to yourself and don't waste energy trying to be like someone else. Figure out who you are and really be happy there.